a lot of people are communicating over the internet on their phone now, not just SMS, you know, um, messages like Signal, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, they all have some kind of end-to-end -end encryption these days. So this is not the same as when you go online to let's say a, a, an online shop and you in, immediately have a conversation and set up an encrypted connection. This is much slower than that and much more asynchronous. So there's a lot of difficulties when using instant messaging or, you know, application-based messaging because we don't know really what's going on between, between the two parties. Right? So I send you a message, theoretically some trustworthy server takes that message and forwards it on, onto your, your phone, right? theoretically. Right? How much do we trust the server? I suppose it depends on the app. Um, but, but in any case, maybe we want to try and use a protocol that means even if we don't trust the server, there's not a lot the server can do. Right? And that's what the Signal protocol uses, and by association, WhatsApp and in Facebook Instant Messenger and things like this. I'll put my phone down, and we'll talk about Alice and Bob again, because we always talk about Alice and Bob. Right? So they want to have a conversation via a server between themselves. Right? Now the problem is that maybe Bob installed the application. So he installed Signal or WhatsApp or something like this six months ago, and he's just waiting patiently for some friend to turn up and install the app as well. Right. I get lots of invites to, to install various different chat apps. Most of them I've turned down because I don't want that many icons on my phone. So what will happen is Bob will start by installing the app and completely aside from whoever he wants to talk to later, he's going to send a few things to the server. He's going to send a public key that's his identity. So that's his identity public key for Bob. This is going to be a public key on an elliptic curve, like lots of the ones we've talked about. And it'll have a private component or a private key associated with it that will be kept to himself. He's also going to sign a public key to verify that he's in control of his private key. Right, that's kind of standard in cryptography. And then he's going to produce a list of one-time pre-keys. Remember that what he wants to do is have key exchange conversations between Alice or Charlie or anyone else that comes along and he wants to do that not knowing when they're going to come along. So he's going to send his parts of the messages ahead of time to the server. So he's going to have you know, a one-use public key here, and another one, and another one. And he's going to number these or something like this. So this is one, two, three, and number four. So these are all public keys of which he has the private keys stashed on his phone right, or on his application. Now the server's going to do this for anyone that installs the application. Right? This will happen between your... your uh, your Signal app and their servers, or your WhatsApp and their servers, and so on. Um, what will happen next is sometime down the line, hopefully Bob's made some friends and they've agreed to talk to him on their phones. So Alice comes along and she wants to set up a communication with Bob. Now, the exact same problems that Bob faced, she faces. Right? The first one is that Bob might have his phone switched off, so she can't start up a conversation. Right? And she also doesn't know where Bob is, so the server does. Right, the server, based on Bob's mobile phone number or IP address or something, will know how to get in contact with him. So she goes to the server and says, I'd like to talk to Bob, can I have a pre-key bundle? Right? And this is a set of parameters from Bob that she can use to form a communication. So the server's going to send to Alice Bob's identity key, Bob's signed pre-key, and one, uh, uh, either at random or sequentially, of these, let's say number three, right, of these one-use keys. Alice is going to be sent three different public keys from Bob. Right, Alice is going to generate an identity key of her own for Alice, and she's going to generate an ephemeral key, which is like a one-use session key, which is very common in Diffie-Hellman for herself there. Right? What are all these going to do? Well, let's, uh, let's get rid of this paper, or just move, or I'll swap it around, shall I? We've got a, I seem to have changed pens, but let's not worry about that. We've got Bob's identity key, that should identify him. Right? If we know that Bob has the private key, and we know that's Bob, the fact that this key has been used means it must be Bob on the other end of the line. Right? That's a really good thing to know. His signed pre-key for Bob, this stops the server messing about with his pre-keys because he signed it and the server can't do that. And a one-use public key for Bob. And what that's going to do is make sure that no one can replay attack Bob by sending this whole conversation again later. Bob is going to delete this when he's seen it for the first time. So when you fetch a pre-key bundle and you use it to talk to someone on one of these apps, they will delete that pre-key so that they can never use it again. And we've got Alice, we've got the identity key from Alice and her ephemeral key. Now, I'm going to use a different pen. We've got five different public keys here, right? And we're going to perform four Diffie-Hellmans, right? Which is again a little bit hairy, but you know, bear with me. To remind you, we did a video on Diffie-Hellman, which you, you might like to watch. But 
What Diffie-Hellman does is you both send public keys to each other, you exchange them, you use your secrets to calculate a shared secret. So any of these two public keys can be combined to create a shared secret, right? But if you only use two of them, you're not getting the whole picture and you're not, you know, for example, if you only use Bob's identity key and Alice's ephemeral key, you aren't guaranteeing the identity of Alice by verifying this particular identity key here. Every public version has a private one. So there's going to be a little, little private identity key for Alice and a little private ephemeral key for Alice. And there you get used within the mathematics. And the same on the other side. So there's a little one for Bob. So there's his identity key for Bob. Right, I've drawn out too many. And this one is, is, let's say, number. This was number three, wasn't it? So, so let's put in number three here. Bob's got a whole list of, of these, right? So he's got a whole list of these, one, two, three, and this is the one he's going to use. Alice is going to perform a Diffie-Hellman key exchange four times, right? So she's going to do this one here, she's going to do this one here, she's going to do this one here, that's number three, and she's going to do this one here, number four, right? So she's bringing all the keys into play. Then she's going to produce one master key, shall we say, with all of these pre-master secrets. So she's going to take one, she's going to append it to two, she's going to append it to three, Append it to four. She's going to put that through something called a key derivation function, which for the sake of simplicity, we'll just say is very similar to a hash function. And that's going to produce her master secret. She can then use that to encrypt things. And theoretically, when she sends a message to Bob, Bob will be able to do the same thing. And no one else will, right? So she'll send a message including something encrypted, her identity key and her ephemeral key. Bob will do the exact same procedure and then he will be able to send her a message back. The way that this signal protocol works with, um, with Alice and Bob and the server in between is called triple Diffie-Hellman. Why are we doing all these different Diffie-Hellmans, right? In, the, in, the, in our previous video, we just had a public key for Alice and a public key for Bob. We seem to be wasting a lot of time. Well, each of these different Diffie-Hellman exchanges gives us something different. But the really important ones that I want to talk about are the ones involving these identity keys here. The identity keys prove who you are. But of course, if I'm Alice and you're Bob and I send you an identity key for myself, it doesn't prove who I am at all. It's just, it's just a number. It doesn't say anything, right? So how do, I actually, how do you actually know that the message came from me, right? And the answer is that actually what you need to do is look at this number offline, out of band. You need to go outside of the normal line of communication over the internet and face-to-face -face look at this number. And if you see that it's right, then you know that it must have been me having this conversation. Okay, so I can send you a message using Signal, right? You've installed Signal. You're Bob, I'm Alice in this case, right? So you've already sent your pre keys to the server, just waiting to go. I, my, my phone will send a message to the server and say, can I get a pre key bundle? And then we'll perform an exchange, right? Something like that. So I'm gonna send you a message. It's not gonna be interesting. Hello, right? So I send you a message. Hopefully it pops up on your phone. It does, there we go. I mean, this is good evidence that it was me, right? I literally sent the message and it appeared on your phone. But that doesn't always happen in instant messaging. So sometimes um, I'm not around or you're not around at the time. So how did you know when it pops up my name on here that it is me? And the answer is you don't, right? Someone could have, the server or someone else could have intercepted these messages and performed a man in the middle attack, right? The only way we can verify it is to check out each other's public keys. Right, our identity keys. So the way that Signal does this is it takes the identity public key of Alice and the identity public key of Bob and it combines them using a hash function into a safety number. Right? That safety number is essentially a summary of our two public identity keys. Right? If we have the same safety number, that means we're having a conversation with the same two identity keys, which means it must be a conversation just between us two. That's the idea. So let's have a look. I'm going to go into my safety number, and they're the same. And in, in Signal, actually, you can press this little verified button which says we've looked at these out of band. This is called an out of band communication because we're not using the normal encryption to verify our keys. Right. Um, so now, actually, when we send messages, it will show as verified. So in WhatsApp, it's not called a safety number, it's just called a security code. But you can see it is absolutely the same. Now, of course, most people don't do this, right? Most people send messages and assume there isn't a man in the middle. And in, in all likelihood, there probably isn't. Right? But if you want to be really sure, maybe have a look at your safety number. We've only covered half the story. Right? We've talked about this pre-key bundles and this, this initial triffy, triple well, diffie helmet. I mean, we all have phones. We talk about batteries all the time. So if you hypothetically picked four words that were in the top 500,